Robert Blackwell Jr. is one of many Chicagoans being honored by the Chicago Defender as a man of excellence. His drive to bring business to black communities is part of the reason. He is the CEO of EKI Digital, and he says technology is the ticket to the future. And I want to, you and I were sitting down, and you said, as long as someone is smart and has a good work ethic, they can do the job. If they're smart, honest, and have a good work ethic, then those are the kind of people we want to hire. Is that hard to find? Uh, I would say there are a lot of people that have those characteristics. And fortunately for our people, young black and Hispanics, they don't tend to be in the networks that can help them go forward. So how do they get in those networks? And what do you do? to get them there? Well, what we do is we actually go out and, and look for people. Mm -hmm. So having conversations in, uh, in schools and colleges, and we end up speaking a lot. So, mm -hmm. And people recommend people to us. So in our company, which is mostly black and Hispanic, which is an anomaly in our industry. It is. Uh, we just get in networks and meet people and tell people what we expect. and. You know, if they don't mind working hard and being in an environment that's really candid, uh, we've, we've had some success finding people. Black Wall Street, you want to rebuild it. We lost it. Yes. And how do we bring it back? Well, if you look at what happened in the, in the Black Wall Street, there's actually a connection to Chicago. In Tulsa, we should say, yeah. Yes, but there's a, uh, there's a connection to Chicago, which most people don't realize. In 1895, Booker T. Washington gave a speech at the Atlanta Exposition. The essence of that speech was America's never going to be what it can be until blacks get included in the economy. He said, we don't need to live around you, but we do have to be a part of the economy. And there was a man named Julius Rosenwald, who was the CEO of Sears, who responded to Booker T. Washington. They built 5,300 schools in the South. Now remember, this was 30 years after the end of slavery. Uh, and they started the Negro Business Leagues. Not long after that came the Black Wall Streets, where you had some small black entrepreneurs, frankly, they came out of Mississippi, mm -hmm. went into Tulsa, Oklahoma, started the Greenwood District, and within about 10 years, you had a s prosperous black community. Just 10 years, and that wasn't long. 10 years, yes. So if what I believe is we need a th what I call the fourth great American movement. The first movement was the civil, excuse me, the American Revolution, then the abolition of slavery. They, they tend to happen once a century. Last century, the 20th century, was about the civil rights movement. I think now we need a movement of people of goodwill dedicated to proving that the free enterprise system works for everybody. Because there's only one way out of, out of poverty. It's entrepreneurial-led economic activity that leads to the appreciation of education and social capital. Social capital is when you reach back and you pull people from your community along, but more importantly, you create an aspirational roadmap for your young people so they know where to place their bets. But you need more than you doing this, don't you? You need a network of people doing this. I mean, you have great ideas, and we're talking this century, so when is this going to happen and how are you going to make it happen? Well, what we need is, I, again, a, a movement of people of goodwill dedicated to proving that this system of free enterprise works for everybody. So how do we get this? How do we get this network of people so to we, do we this? So we started something called Alpha Mission. Okay. <laughs> and Alpha Mission has very specific outcomes. Mm -hmm. And what we want government and business to do is to just do business. Uh, because you can't have a business without a customer. Right now, we've got a lot of these minority programs which are focused on giving people entrepreneurial lectures without right. having any money. As, you were, as we were <laughs> saying, we talk about it, talk about it, but we're not doing it. That, that's, that's correct. So what we have to, nowhere in the world are poor people healthy, educated, and safe. And conversely, nowhere in the world are affluent people, regardless of their race, not healthy, educated, and safe. So therefore, in order to solve these problems, we have to get people to just do business with people that are ready to do business. And then in exchange for that opportunity, the black and Hispanic entrepreneurs that benefit from that have to pull other people along. That's how you create social capital. That's how you create wealth. And by the way, that's how we're going to fix some of the challenges that we have in our city and our country. White wealthy people have been doing that for years. Uh, lots of people. In fact, in, in 2009, I got invited to do a tour of India. And I met somebody in the central bank, and they kind of gave me the story of India. 
He said in 1991, they figured out socialism doesn't work. Uh -huh. They started to free their economy. Their government started doing business with their small entrepreneurs, which prepared them for the international market. And then U.S. business just did business with capable Asian entrepreneurs. They didn't have any special programs. They weren't trying to save anybody. They just did business. And in a period of 20 years, India and China took 750 million people out of poverty. That's double the population of the United States. During the same period of time, black people went deeper into poverty. So maybe we ought to do what they did. So how do we do that? Are you sitting down with the president anytime soon? Do you have an <laughs> audience with him? Well, I mean, listen, how do you do that? Look, the, what I think is I, I try to talk to CEOs and mayors and, other, and governors, people that actually spend money directly. That's what we need. We don't need any more programs. We just need people to just do. There are lots of programs, do, too. Oh, listen, we got, yeah. we got lots of programs. Yeah. There's probably more programs than flies in the city. <laughs> uh, what we don't have are people doing Action. real business with blacks. And when people do business with black people, in proportion to our talent, we will solve all the problems of crime and health and everything else that we have in the city. There was a time when they black, there were black businesses that were booming in the city, though. Well, yeah, if you look at the, actually the height of black business was between 1910 and 1930, corresponded with the black Wall Streets, and there were 81 of them, mostly in the Jim Crow South. So as black migrants left the South to come North for opportunities and dignity, it wasn't just for jobs, it was dignity. Mm -hmm. Who wants to live in all that drama? Right. So black people came up to the, to the North for opportunity and dignity. Like most people, they self-segregated. They, they segregated for cultural reasons. And there's two types of segregation. There's cultural segregation, and then there is economic segregation. Immigrants actually segregate themselves for cultural reasons. That's what happened to us. Mm -hmm. So we had prosperous, uh, relatively, they weren't drama free, but they were a lot better off, relatively speaking, before 1968. Do you know I could sit here and talk to you all day about this because <laughs> we're trying to solve the world's problems right here, but for more information on Alpha Mission, visit alphamission.com. Thank you so much.